$500 gaming PC, it's dead. How could you think you could possibly build a decent gaming PC for $500 in this day and age? 2021, nothing's gotten better with the GPU shortage. It's been a whole year since the 30 series came out and we're still watching stock trackers, camping out in front of Best Buy, and driving eight hours to your nearest micro center. The days of piecing together $500 PC, they're long gone. Anything you could build for $500 is gonna be garbage, right? Wrong! Today I'm gonna show you that with a little budgeting and a little shopping around, you can build yourself a $500 gaming PC that's worth playing on. I'm not talking about one of those garbage tier Best Buy pre-builds that come with like a GT 1030 or a GT 710. Where'd they even find those at? Why do they have that? No, I'm talking real gaming hardware. I'm talking about real playability at 1080p, 60 frames a second. And we're gonna do it all for 500-ish dollars. You know, you might need a few extra bucks to make this work, but not much, just a, just a couple. Before we get started, there's a couple things you're gonna have to come to terms with on this build. If you wanna do this, you gotta buy some stuff used. We're talking the video card, the CPU, the motherboard, possibly RAM. There's just no other way around it. Off the shelf parts are gonna push us way out of our price range. So if you need to keep it at that $500 price point, you gotta make a couple concessions. The other thing, we're going for function over form here. So that means a bare bones case, no RGB RAM no RGB lights, no RGB at all. But when it's all said and done, we'll hopefully have a PC that's got respectable specs and can play anything out there that you wanna throw at it. Our target for this build, it's 1080p and 60 frames a second. The reason I'm sticking with 1080p is because even in this day and age, according to the Steam hardware survey, 68% of gamers are still using a 1080p monitor and we'll take whatever settings in the games we can to get to that 60 frames per second target, whether it be low, medium, high, I just wanna get 1080p 60 and I'll call that a pass. And after doing a little research, the graphics card that I chose to go with on this build is gonna be also the Steam consensus, the GTX 1060 six gigabytes. So we gotta get this out of the way right now. The elephant in the room, the graphics card prices. If you wanna get something that's worth playing on at all, you gotta pay up. Yes, the prices are inflated, but if we stick to our budget with everything else, we can get close to our target price. So I compared the sold listings on eBay and averaged out the past 10 results. This came up with $295. Now, that kinda of stings because when this card released back in 2016, it MSRP'd for $250. Though, I'm not sure if anyone was ever able to actually buy this card for $250 back then, it still stings paying a premium on a card that old. While it is a bit of a markup, I would estimate that before the GPU apocalypse we're in right now, the cards are going for probably around $200 on the used market. So it's a markup, but it's not the worst in the world. Okay, now that the video card's out of the way, we've got 200 bucks to build the rest of the system. And can we do it? Well, maybe, we'll see. So the next thing I needed to look at was a processor to pair up with our 1060. And considering we have a hard target of 1080p 60 frames a second and we're not worried about future proofing, we're looking at gaming right now, I ended up going a couple generations back with an Intel i5 4690K. These can be picked up for about $40 on eBay and while you don't actually need the K series SKU because we're not going to be overclocking or anything, they were about the same price for the non-K variant. The CPU's got 4 cores, clocked at 3.5 GHz and it has a boost of 3.9. Hopefully it won't be a bottleneck for our 1060. If you're getting a CPU from eBay, there's a good chance it's not gonna come with a cooler. Your options to keep your budget down are gonna be something like an Intel stock cooler, which can be had for around $10. If you bump your budget up by 10 or 20 more dollars, you can pretty much pick any cooler you want on Amazon that'll keep your temps under control. I happen to have this Noctua low profile cooler kicking around, so we're gonna go with that, but it won't affect the performance of the overall machine if you were to build a similar system. For the motherboard, you just need the most basic no frills board that you can find. And this will come in around $50 if you do some searching. Just find the features you want with the price you're gonna pay and snag it up. Personally, I'm gonna be using this ASRock H97 mini ITX board just cause I had it laying around and it's gonna work fine for this build. Though I did some searching and you can pick up this board for close to $50 so it falls in line with our budget. For memory, I'm gonna recommend going with 16 gigs and look for some OEM takeout sticks on eBay. You can pick them up for about $40 all day long. 
but if you're really trying to come in under budget, you can cut that in half and go with eight gigabytes. But if you do that, make sure you go with two four gig sticks so you're still running in dual channel mode. Otherwise, you're gonna be leaving performance on the table. For storage, SSDs are cheap and plentiful and there's no reason not to go with one. I picked up this crucial 512 gigabyte unit for $50. If you really need to save some money, you can go with a 256 gig unit and probably get it for close to 30. Storage is something you can easily add later and carry over to a different build, so in the future you could always add a bigger drive. Next, we gotta power this beast, and since it's kinda older hardware with a pretty low power requirement, I would recommend going with this 500 watt unit from EVGA on Amazon. It's $34 and it's not gonna be modular, but it's gonna provide plenty of power for this system with some room to spare. Last, we need something to put this all in. And looking around, it seems that cases might be creeping up in price because I swear you used to be able to get cases for $29 all day long. But I ended up going with this Cooler Master Q300L for $50 with prime shipping. If you have a little extra time and can wait, you can save about $10 and get something that takes a little bit longer to get to you. So our total cost for my recommended spec came out to $579. I understand that's a little bit more than the $500 budget and some people might not be able to swing that. I would honestly recommend you shovel a few more driveways, mow some more lawns, or do whatever you can to get that little extra bit of your budget. But if cost is really an issue, you can shave off in the areas like I mentioned. Go with a little bit less RAM, smaller SSD, go with the cheapest cooler you can find, and hell, if you could get a case to reuse, that would help too. But as it is, you could probably get it right around $512, which is a lot closer to that $500 target price. With all that said, it's time to put this thing together, put it through its paces, so let's get started. The first test I threw at this computer was TimeSpy. I like to use this because it gives you an overall feel of how the computer is going to perform and you get an objective number at the end that you can use to compare to other systems. Our overall score was 3,922. This is a decent score to be honest considering the age of the hardware, but it is a little overzealous here saying we can run Battlefield 5 at 1440p Ultra with 45 frames a second. We'll see how that holds up as that's one of the games we're going to test, but I don't think that's true. I like to use this comparison page to see how you stack up against other systems. You can see here we're better than 29% of all results, though it does say we're behind a gaming laptop. I decided to throw a stress test combo at this of Prime95 and Firmark just to see how the temperatures handled. That case wasn't inspiring a lot of confidence to me, and it seemed to be doing okay, and then the CPU started spiking into the 90s, and I think at one point it hit 100. So. We're not getting great cooling, but we are using a low profile cooler and this isn't a realistic load to run on this system. Next I tried CSGO, cause I guess you're supposed to use this game for testing. I think people actually play it and don't just benchmark with it, but I wouldn't know. Anyway, we're running 1080p, auto detected high settings and we were getting well into the hundreds, 120, 150, no problem. So this game ran great on this system. I wasn't able to use the MSI afterburner overlay that you normally see, but I am running the little tiny steam FPS counter up in the corner so you can verify there.
I don't think I've legitimately played GTA 5 since it launched back on the PS3, but we're going to test it anyway. You can see here it's running 1080p with a mixture of high and very high settings that were auto detected. It has no problem staying above that 60 frames per second target, hitting well into the hundreds sometimes, so it runs great on this system. Next up we have Battlefield 5. In my previous video where I reviewed the 750Ti, I was blown away at how well it handled this game, so I had no worries that the 1060 would have any issue with it. We're running 1080p with medium and high settings and we're getting well into the 60s with no problem. I was actually having some fun playing this, I haven't played an online game like this in a long time, and I was going to finish out the match until I realized it has, is that 27, oh, I don't got time for that. Sorry guys, I gotta quit out of this. Well, the good times had to come to an end at some point. Next we tried Cyberpunk, and just like before, this game is not well optimized, and I struggled to get this to run at 60 frames a second at all. I tried 1080p low settings, I tried with the resolution scaling, and no matter what I did, I could not get to that elusive 60 frames a second. You might notice in the corner we're actually experiencing our first CPU bottleneck. You can see it pegged at 100% there while the GPU kind of bounces around between the 70s, 80s, 90s. But definitely getting held back by our CPU at this point. I'd be curious to see what the 1060 could do in a CPU that isn't holding it back. And last up we've got Far Cry 6, a brand new game that I'm sure a lot of people would be curious to see how this machine performs with. I started out with 1080p medium settings just to see how it went and I ran the built-in benchmark. It actually performed pretty well, averaging 51 frames per second, which isn't too bad considering the age of the hardware we're using. But since we're trying to hit that 60 frame per second target, I decided to try the benchmark again with low settings to see what we would get. The low settings allowed it to claw up to 55 frames per second average, which it's better, but it's not quite that 60 frames target we were hoping for. But we'll try some actual gameplay and see how it performs, maybe it's not telling the full story. So in game, the frame rate can really fluctuate depending on what's going on on the screen. When you're just exploring around in the jungle, it has no problem sitting around 60 or 70 FPS. When you get into an action heavy scene like you see right here, it kind of dips into the 50s with a little bit of the 40s. But overall, it's a pretty ex playable experience and I still had fun. One other thing to note is that this does seem to be another game where we are CPU bottlenecked. You can see it pegged around 100% with the GPU floating around 75 to 85%. So it definitely is leaving a bit of performance on the table and could benefit from a higher end CPU. Oh, who's a good alligator? Are you ready to go kill some people? Yeah? All right, let's go. So there we go. We did it. I told you we could build a respectable gaming PC in 2021 during the great GPU apocalypse for about $500, 500-ish dollars. This system performs awesome, better than I expected it to even, and technically it's kind of the same system that the majority of Steam users are running anyway, so I mean that many people can't be wrong, right? I mean, yeah, we paid a premium for a video card that's basically six years old at this point, but as you saw, that card still rocks. They handled every game we threw at it, well, besides Cyberpunk, but you know, that's a whole nother thing. And I suspect it'll still be a good card for a couple years to come. Sure, the system doesn't have any real future proofing. You know, the motherboard we're using can only accept up to an i7-4790, so you can't go any newer on the generations. So that means to upgrade the CPU, you need a new motherboard and most likely you'd end up needing DDR4 RAM. So it's gonna end up being basically a new build. So this computer is built for today, not for tomorrow. And you know, this is kind of just a template showing what you can do if you're conscious with your money and willing to buy some used parts. If you were to give yourself an extra $100, maybe $200, you could scale up to a more modern Ryzen processor. You can get DDR4 memory. You could have features like an M.2 slot and you can have a computer that's much more competitive. But at the end of the day, we're trying to build a computer on a budget and I think we can accomplish that. The case is nothing to write home about, but it does work and you don't get any fancy lights or anything, but you get a functional gaming PC that'll perform better than anything close to that price range that you can buy off the shelf at either Best Buy, Newegg, or Amazon. 
This was a fun build. It proved that even today when graphics cards go for triple what they cost normally, you can still build a worthwhile gaming PC on a budget. Every part was readily available, multiple listings for the processor, motherboard, RAM, all that stuff, pick it up all day long on eBay. That Core i5-4690K is still a good CPU and was barely bottlenecked by any of the games. Most of the time the GPU was doing all the heavy lifting. And I think you could actually get a couple more years out of that processor with no issues. And if you're worried about buying used parts, just know that I've been buying used parts for years and reusing things I've already had, and I've never run into an issue. Computer parts are pretty resilient, if I'm being honest. And if you're worried about buying a card that's been mined with, don't worry, no one's using a GTX 1060 for mining these days. It's just people cashing in on the GPU shortage. Well, I think that's going to do it. We've got our $500 budget PC back there humming away, and I think I'm going to go play some more games on it. I hope this video helped you out and inspired you to build your own budget PC, even if you thought it wasn't possible today. Make sure to leave a comment below what you thought of this build, and let me know if you're able to build anything budget these days. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like and consider subscribing. And with all that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Until then.